As well as being an expert on money matters, did you know that Witch also has a team of experts in various aspects of UK law? The Witch Legal Advice Service gives its members access to this team, allowing them to get advice on a range of legal matters that impact consumers' everyday lives. And right now, you can join the Witch Legal Advice Service and save 30% off the usual annual price. So whether it's a rental dispute, a last minute holiday cancellation, or legal employment advice, which can give you personalized one-to-one -one advice in a simple, convenient, and affordable manner. Don't struggle in silence or suffer the stress of wading through endless streams of online information from unreliable sources. Join online and book your appointment to speak to one of our experts to get the advice and guidance you need tailored to you. Plus, right now, you can join and get legal support from Witch for a whole year for just £69.30, a saving of 30%. Just go to witch.co.uk forward slash legal advice to find out more or click the link in the podcast show notes. This offer ends on the 31st of August, so don't miss out. When life gives you questions, Witch. Get answers. Welcome to the Witch Money Podcast, your weekly hit of money news and personal finance hacks to help make you better off. I'm your host, Lucia Ariano, and here's what's coming up this week. Well, it can vary significantly, to be honest, but broadly speaking, if you're taking out a £250,000 loan over a 25-year period, if your mortgage rates falls by 1%, you're probably saving around £150 a month. So, for example, on a two-year fix for someone with a 10% deposit, we're seeing lenders bunch around about 5.2%, 5.3%. And obviously what you might have been hoping if you've been monitoring this market for a while is we'd see someone crash below that 5% barrier on the two-year and we're not there yet. This week, we're deep diving into mortgages. Now, at the start of this month, we saw a long-awaited and much-welcomed fall to the base rate. But has that been reflected in mortgage rates and how far could they go down? Well, to help us navigate all of this and plenty more, we have Witch's Mortgage Specialist, Stephen Maunder, and Anisha Beveridge, Head of Research at Estate Agents Hamptons. Hello, Vo. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Hi. Well, shall we start from the top then? Stephen, do you want to remind us what the base rate is and why it's important, how it's linked to mortgage rates? Well, yes, yeah, so the base rate is probably something you've heard a lot about recently in the mm. news, especially over the last couple of years with rising inflation, etc. Essentially, the base rate is the national bank rate of the country. And what it does is it influences the cost for financial institutions to borrow money from the Bank of England. Now, when it comes to mortgage rates, there's quite a lot of complex mechanisms that underpin the cost of mortgages. It's mm -hmm. not just all about the base rate. There are other things involved too. But essentially, the the base rate is designed to keep inflation at a set level of around 2% at mm -hmm. all times. So that's the Bank of England's job is... If inflation is getting too high, they will increase the base rate to ultimately bring spending down. Mm. And what happened over the last couple of years is we saw inflation peak at around about, I think it was 11% in October 2022. So what we've seen back then, the base rate was at a historic low and we've seen things go up and up and up. And now we're finally at the point where things are going in the opposite direction. The thing about mortgages is a lot of mortgages are linked to the base rate. So if you have a variable rate mortgage, for example, a tracker mortgage, that will go up or down depending on what happens to the base rate. So on the one hand, it's kind of an indicator of wider economic health, where we are as a country fiscally. But on the other hand, it can also be used directly to influence mortgage rates going up and down as well. And we've mentioned that the, the base rate has gone down this month. Can you give us a bit more detail? Where are we at with it now? So the base rate was at 5.25%, which was the highest we've seen in 16 years. Mm -hmm. It was that for about almost exactly a year. And it's now gone down to 5%, which... If you've seen some of the headlines over the last couple of weeks, it might sound like an incredibly exciting development, but I think we're all hoping <laughs> it will be the first in a series of steps downwards with the economy back on track, inflation at around about 2%. Whether you're a homeowner, whether you're looking to buy a home, it's a great indication that things, after a really tough couple of years, are maybe starting to move in the right direction mm. again. And Anisha, what's your take on why the base rate was cut, you know, this month? 
I feel like experts had been kind of predicting that it would fall for a while now. Yeah, absolutely. And as Stephen said, the main indicator that the Bank of England are watching is inflation. And I think it's a number that we've all become obsessed with over Mm. the last 18 months, watching it month in, month out. And the main reason why the Bank of England decided to cut rates was because inflation hit its 2% target in May and in June. It actually ticked up a little bit again to 2.2% in July, but that was a bit of a sort of base effect. It was because of something that happened this time last year. So people weren't quite so worried about that. But as Stephen was saying, really, they decided that the base rate of 5.25% was putting a little bit too much pressure on the economy. They were starting to get a little bit worried about economic growth, what could happen to the labour market, things like that. So it was a way of just taking some of that pressure off. And it's a committee that decides what happens with the base rate. Was it a unanimous decision to bring it down this time round? No, it wasn't. And to be honest, base rate changes very rarely are unanimous. Mm. Um, Base rates is set by the Monetary Policy Committee at the Bank of England. There are nine members on that board. Some of them are internal and work for the Bank of England. Some of them are external. And actually, the vote was five to four. So five people Mm. voted for a cut. Most of them were actually working at the Bank of England, which was quite interesting. Mm. And four members uh, voted to hold. Very interesting. Well, we'll be coming back to the next committee meeting and what might happen uh, <laughs> over the course of the next few months. But but first, let's get a bit more then into mortgage rates. I mean, the big question, where shall we start? Have they actually fallen? Yes, mortgage rates have fallen. That's the good news. <laughs> That's the headline news. I think we'll come on to it shortly, but they'd actually been falling for a little bit before mm-hmm. the base yeah. rate cut. But we are seeing across all loan to value levels now, rates falling the we did a bit of research last week where we analyzed what's kind of happened to headline rates at each kind of loan to value level so everything from 60 percent to 95 and we found that lenders are really trying to compete for those market leading kind of big deposits um loans so um We've recently seen the market leading rates drop below 4% for the first time for Mm. some time. Sadly, if you've got a 5% or 10% (laughs) deposit, even though your rates have got furthest to fall, they're falling by the smallest amount at the moment. Mm. First time buyers are kind of being locked out of those rate drops at the moment. But broadly speaking, the market is looking a little better for everyone. Mm, We'll we'll come back to first time buyers later in the show. Um, But Anisha... Would you say that rates were kind of falling before this decision? You know, are lenders anticipating what's happening before it does? Yeah, because of the way that mortgage rates are priced, they're generally priced on um, what we call swap rates, which are essentially financial markets expectations Mm. of where the base rate is going to be in the future. A little bit hard to get your head around at times, but... A lot of a lot of the financial markets were expecting the Bank of England to cut around August or even September time this year, and they're still expecting another cut. So when lenders are kind of buying or borrowing money from these swap rate markets, they were already sort of coming down. So we were already seeing mortgage rates fall. But I don't know whether you agree, Stephen, but I would say that actually the Bank of England making, actually pulling the trigger to cut Mm. rates was a real signal. And since then, we've seen swap rates fall even more. And that's really where lenders kind of offering those sub 4% mortgages has kind of gathered a bit more pace in recent weeks. So yes, people were expecting it. But actually, because of that signal, it has helped mortgage rates come down a little bit more than beforehand. And what about the knock-on effect on some other mortgage types? So, you know, variable rate and tracker mortgages, how are they sitting at the moment? What kinds of deals will people be getting at the moment? Well, um, just for a little bit of context for anyone who's listening who perhaps hasn't taken out a mortgage before, Mm. uh, the vast majority of people take out fixed rate mortgages, which lock in your rate for a set period of time, usually two or five years. But there are lots of variable rate deals out there, as you say, uh, Lucia. So if you are on a tracker mortgage, which tracks literally tracks the Bank of England base rate plus or minus a percentage, you will have immediately seen your rate come down. The other most common form of variable rate mortgage is discount mortgage, which essentially offers a lender offers a reduction on your lender's standard variable rate, which ultimately is the rate that you get charged if you don't remortgage at the end of your fixed term. Now, if you're on a discount mortgage, there is no guarantee your rate will have dropped straight away. In fact, we had a look last week and a lot of lenders had still maintained their SVRs at the level they were at previously. They're not 
it's not incumbent upon them to drop it at the time of a base rate cut. What, what I would say about about variable rate mortgages is that the base rate coming down may make things like tracker mortgages seem a little bit more attractive. Mm. But at the moment, um, I don't know what you think, Anisha, but I think at the moment we're still looking at needing maybe one or two further cuts in the base rate before those trackers really become attractive. Mm -hmm. They're still priced a little bit above where they need to be to be a viable option. That's just what I think. Yeah, I agree. Mm. I think last this time last year, when rates were kind of rising quite quickly, and particularly post post um, the mini budget, uh, tracker rates were becoming, they looked quite good value. And mm. we saw a number of households move back onto tracker deals, whereas historically, a lot of people have now fixed. So but those kind of tables have turned again, haven't they? And mm. I think now it's some of those fixes, and particularly some of the long term fixes now are actually looking like quite good value. And so for most companies, customers then, what does a, a cut in mortgage rates actually look like in real terms? Well, it can vary significantly, to be honest. But broadly speaking, if you're taking out a £250,000 loan over a 25-year period, if your mortgage rates falls by 1%, you're probably saving around £150 a month, mm. which for some people that doesn't sound like much. But actually, for particularly first-time buyers, that can be the difference between being able to afford your first home and not being mm. able to afford your first home. So it can have a big difference. But as we've kind of mentioned, actually, a number of households Households are on fixed rate mortgages and they won't feel any sort of change until their term expires. Most people who are remortgaging today and are kind of rolling off a five year fix will probably see their mortgage repayments go up by around 20% compared mm. to what they were paying, even though they've been paying down some of that debt over the last five years. And when we were kind of crunching some numbers last week on this, we don't really think it's going to be until probably September 2027 onwards where mm. people will actually see their mortgage payments fall when they come to refix. Well, after a quick break, we'll be looking deeper into this, how first time buyers could be impacted, whether or not this will impact the rental market and what the future of the base rate and mortgage rates could look like. That's next. As the summer comes to an end, you may not know how to prep your garden for the autumn and winter months ahead. Rest assured, because we have a team of experts at Witch Gardening who can give you practical advice. Better still, you can join Witch Gardening right now and receive 25% off the usual price for an annual subscription. By joining Witch Gardening, you'll receive the magazine direct to your door. It's packed full of useful advice, plus our best buy recommendations. You'll also gain access to one-to-one -to -one gardening advice so you can get your questions answered with clear advice tailored to your own particular needs. So to join Witch Gardening and receive 25% off the usual price, just head to signup.witch.co.uk forward slash WLP dash gardening. That's signup.witch.co.uk forward slash WLP dash gardening to join Witch Gardening for just £36.75 for a whole year. Be quick, this offer ends on the 11th of September. Welcome back to the show. Now, first time buyers with smaller deposits could have been put off when rates were high. So will the cuts make things easier for them? Stephen, do you want to start us off? I, th I think I spoiled this in the first half, but yes, rates are dropping for first time buyers with smaller deposits, but mm. perhaps not, not as enough. much as they might have hoped. So as I said earlier, at the moment, we're seeing most competition for people with bigger deposits and first time buyer deals, i.e. deals for people with small deposits, are usually the last to get cut. Mm -hmm. What we're noticing at the moment is that, for example, let's say you've got a 10% deposit, we've noticed rates drop very slightly. Uh, the indications are initially that we're seeing lenders kind of compete elsewhere. So we're seeing, for, so for example, on a two-year fix for someone with a 10% deposit, we're seeing lenders bunch around about 5.2%, 5.3%. And obviously what you might have been hoping if you'd been monitoring this market for a while is we'd see someone crash below that 5% barrier on a two-year and we're not there yet. But we are seeing more lenders offer um, fee-free deals. I was talking to some brokers this morning and we're also seeing three-year fixes kind of make a bit more of a comeback in that market to kind of give people a sort of intermediary um, option between the two and five. 
So it may be that while the market is still kind of sizing up where it wants to be, we've had a huge amount of chopping and changing of rates mm. recently. We might see in the short term in this market incentives be where lenders look to compete. So fee free, possibly saving you a thousand pound on mm. an application fee, maybe cash back incentives. And from what I gather, there's also a bit more of an openness to new build lending as well coming in. If you are listening to this and you're looking to buy with a small deposit, it's not as good a news as you might have mm-hmm. hoped. But what, what I would say is if, if you're just starting the home buying process now and you speak to a broker, this process could take you, will take you a number of months. And if rates drop and you've gone through a broker, they may be able to shift you on to a lower rate during mm-hmm. that process. So it's not necessarily a reason not to go for it now mm. if you're a first-time buyer. And as Anisha said, it could be years before mm. we see the very low rates that we yeah. saw a couple of years ago. Well, we will be talking more about what's to come, but I suppose then, is it similar news too for anyone listening hoping to, to upsize? Sort of. Um, upsizers generally have already built up a little bit more equity in their homes, so they're more likely to be on the lower loan-to-value deals that Stephen was talking about, your sort of 60% LTV deals, which are generally the ones where rates have fallen quite a lot. Mm. But upsizers have different challenges, to be perfectly honest, and they were really kind of sat tight over the last couple of years. Most people, when they upsize, typically borrow that extra money to move from, for example, a a flat to a house, which has become, as we know, very costly when rates are or have touched kind of five, six percent to do that. And on top of that, since COVID, we've seen house prices rise an awful lot faster than flat prices or smaller homes. So that kind of pound gap has really kind of opened up. But already in some of our numbers, particularly since the election kind of went through um, and mortgage rates have started falling, we have started to see more upsizes enter the market. And I think those kind of sub 4% mortgage deals have been a little bit eye opening to that group in particular. And I suppose we've also seen rent prices going up uh, in recent months and years and, you know, how difficult that is for so many renters. Is this, is this could this be good news for renters? I think it's definitely better news, but I think there's still a lot of factors at play in the rental market at the moment. As you said, we've seen rents kind of rise by double digit pace for most of last Mm. year, actually. That pace of growth is slowing. Um, And in July, the average rent on a newly let property rose 5.7% year on year. So still outpacing inflation and still quite brutal for a number of tenants looking to move home. But one of the big factors behind why rents have been rising is because landlords' mortgage costs have been rising. Landlords are actually typically the group who have been most exposed to higher interest rates. They're more likely to have a mortgage on their buy-to-let than your typical homeowner. And they typically have own those homes with quite small deposits. So they're sort of on the breadline a little bit. Mm. Um, And that's kind of why we've seen rents rise because landlords have been trying to push those costs forward. So hopefully lower mortgage rates will kind of soften that a little bit. Um, And you've also got the fact that lower mortgage rates might actually mean that some more, we see a bit few more first time buyers into the market as well. So fewer renters might take some of the pressure off demand there too. And we've touched on how house prices have changed, but can we have a brief word now on kind of where they are at the moment? You know, are they rising? Could that counteract the rate cuts? Well, I I feel like we we talk about house prices so often, (laughs) both at which and in this country as a whole, uh, it's sort of a (laughs) national obsession. And the truth is, it really depends. Um, It's been a buyer's market the last couple of years, largely because not that many people could afford to buy, therefore people weren't putting their houses on the market. Um, and obviously, lower rates and the prospect of lower rates will encourage people to, when they put houses on the market, put them on for higher prices. Mm-hmm. But I think so far, what the, the speed of rate decline in mortgages has started slowly. It looks like it'll continue slowly. And I think in the short term, that will keep us in the kind of buyer's market we're in now. But it really depends. I think on average, we're looking at sort of maybe 1% year on year growth in house prices. So kind of almost imperceptible. I think what you will see in a lot of areas is that competitively priced homes will sell close to asking and ones where people are maybe being a little bit unrealistic will sit on the market for many, many months because there simply isn't 
the indicators are more people are starting to come out and look at houses and hopefully buy houses. But apart from in very kind of squeezed markets, we're unlikely to see kind of things going to bidding wars and best Mm. and finals and things like that anytime soon. And Anisha, is there anything you'd add to that, you know, given your experience of the market recently? Yeah, I think the um, fact that mortgage rates have been falling has been a bit of a kind of turning point for the housing market, actually. Um, I think we all know that house prices were falling pretty much across the country Mm. last year. And all the signs point to the fact that they are no longer falling. Even in London, some of the latest house price data that came out from the ONS showed that house prices had returned to growth in London Mm. for the first time. And I think that's possibly been about 18 months month something like that so yeah I think we are kind of on a more positive footing for house price growth and people making more moves but of course mortgage rates are still relatively high and compared to what we have been seeing so we're not forecasting any big kind of bounce back in house prices anytime soon. So let's look then to the future of mortgage rates. But before we get to that, can we just touch on what experts are expecting to happen with the base rate for the rest of the year? So the next committee meeting is in September, as we mentioned. What's likely to happen? And, you know, could we see multiple further cuts this year and, you know, even looking further ahead? I think the truth is we don't really know. Um, Experts have got a lot of stuff wrong and Mm. financial markets have got a lot of stuff wrong over the last couple of years. It has been pretty, it's been a bit of a weird time to say the very least. At the moment, financial markets are pricing in one, potentially two further base rate cuts between now and the end of the year. But of course, all of this is at the whim of kind of economic data that's coming in on almost a daily basis. And it's not just a case of what happens in this country. They're reacting to what's going to happen abroad. They're particularly watching people like the Fed who set rates in the US um, and the ECB in Europe as well. But broadly speaking, I think we'll likely see at least one more base rate cut this year. Um, And financial markets are expecting the base rate to probably get to around 3.75% by the end of 2025, Mm. with 3.25-ish looking like the new long-term normal. So realistically, that doesn't give mortgage rates an awful lot of headroom to come down considerably more from where we are today, in my view. I agree. I think that the mood music is that the base rate won't drop in September at the next meeting. It possibly will in November. I think that's kind of what I'm hearing from brokers, but everything's on the knife edge at the moment. I mean, the fact that the last the last vote was a 5-4 split, mm. and we need to keep that in mind because I think historically... I think there was a, maybe a, I was a little bit surprised it went down last month because although the mood music was moving that way, the Bank of England tend to go one after you expect them to because mm. they tend to be a little bit risk averse. Mm. So I agree. I think I think at most one more before the end of the year. I, I hope they're going to be that. tentative. They're going. Yeah. To, I think it's more likely that they're going to play it safe than anything mm. else. And I think we've seen that play out over the last couple of years. Yeah. And, and what would you say? Is it the case now that that the base rate is likely to be on a kind of smooth decline downwards or might we see some increases still? Who knows? I think everything's kind of up for grabs really with that. I think generally the economic data has been fairly good. I think the economy's held its own a lot more than most people were expecting. So that kind of paves the way for gradual but slow decline in in base rate from here on in. There haven't been kind of too many big recession fears or big jolts in unemployment or things like that, which actually might force the bank to cut more. Um, So yeah, I'm kind of on the slow but steady decline Mm. trajectory at the moment. Yeah, I agree. I think we may see steady declines over the next 12 months or so. We may see it kind of settle towards the end of next year at kind of Maybe what would be a new normal, as as you mentioned, maybe around somewhere like 3.75 or 4, something like that. Mm. Um, but I think it would take a kind of unexpected economic jolt to result in the base rate suddenly going up. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's less than two years since we saw one of those examples. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I don't want to say that's not going to happen. <laughs> but I think it would be... It'd be quite. It would have to be quite bad news for the economy for something to happen, yeah, to reverse what the trend is likely to be. 
And we should add, actually, that inflation is expected to pick up a little bit over Mm. the course of the rest of this year. But the Bank of England think that that's going to be fairly temporary. So that's kind of factored into their forecasts and their decision making. So if people do see inflation news that it is kind of ticking up a bit, I don't think it's a case of having to be overly alarmed and all of a sudden have a knee jerk reaction Mm. that the bank will hike rates because of that. But of course, if those numbers come in higher than they were expecting, Mm. then you could see something change direction. But probably not, I think, is probably the guess at the moment. (laughs) And so shall we bring in now then your prediction for mortgages? And, you know, I suppose as well, and advice for our listeners, because they might be listening today thinking, well, it's going down. Should I be making a decision now or or should I wait a few months? What would you say? (laughs) Gosh, it's a really hard one, isn't it? And I think based on what we kind of know at the moment and based on what sort of financial markets are predicting, I think we might see mortgage rates drift down a tiny bit more, Mm. but I'm not really predicting that much more, to be honest, between here, between now and the end of the year. One thing would be my piece of advice to keep an eye out of, and we we touched on it earlier, actually, is that Yes, there are some sub 4% mortgage deals available, but it's really important to get good advice on this stuff because some of the fees are actually quite high. Mm. So sometimes you're actually better off taking out a higher mortgage rate that's potentially fee free Mm. than taking out a lower mortgage rate, which can sometimes have a £1,500 fee Mm. attached to it. So you really do have to kind of sit down and do the maths with these things. It's quite important more so now than ever. At times where there's economic kind of uncertainty, as there has been quite quite repeatedly, really, over the last few years, it's when things like getting that expert, expert advice, speaking to a broker can really come into its own because this is complicated. I mean, there are over mm. thou- 5,000 products mm. plus on the market at the moment. Even if you kind of know what you're doing, it's quite difficult to <laughs> navigate. Um, so yeah, I'd say speak to a broker. I'd also say my, my other advice would be, and this is one we kind of hammer home a lot, is don't just go to your bank. You mm. may have had them a long time. You may have a relationship with them, but the chances of in a market where there's 60, 70 lenders, your bank being the one that will offer you the best rate is relatively low. In terms of predictions, just something to age quite badly um, after this podcast. Um, do we see in a year's time the headline headline 60% rate being down at 3%, it's just gone below 4%. Is that possible? Well, I was talking to my team about this yesterday, actually, (laughs) this very question. And from what we could kind of predict, probably not. Okay. Um, I think if the base rates, if if we're forecasting that the base rate's probably only going to come down to 3.25% mm. longer term, mm. lenders tend to add a margin on top of that because yeah. they've got to make some money somewhere, which doesn't get you close to 3%, to be perfectly mm. honest. But like we said, there's a lot that can kind of happen and people can only plan really with what's kind of in front of them today. So if you can afford a mortgage today and you're happy um, and you found a house that you love, then perhaps that's your prerogative to make that work. But yeah, we're not we're mm. not expecting big, big falls I was, in rates. I was really hoping we could end with a wild prediction there. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I'll get fired. <laughs> so yeah, so things hopefully going in the right direction, but um, don't get too excited just yet. I think mm. that's probably like, like um, urging a bit of caution, maybe. That's probably the overall message. It's definitely looking better. Yeah. Well, I'm pleased we managed to come to some kind of positive (laughs) outlook at the end. Thank you both, Anisha and Stephen, for joining us today. Thanks. Thank you. Well, a huge thank you again to Stephen and Anisha for coming on the show today and to you for listening to this week's episode of the Witch Money podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, please do hit subscribe to make sure you catch our new episodes as soon as they drop. For daily money news and advice, you can find us on social media at Witch Money and online at witch.co.uk forward slash money. And we also have a free money newsletter, which is delivered to your inbox every Monday. To sign up, visit witch.co.uk forward slash money newsletter. This episode of the Witch Money podcast was written and presented by Mealy Cheer Ariano and produced and edited by James Rowe. Are you thinking about the future and how to protect your loved ones? Creating a will is one of the most important steps you can take to ensure your wishes are carried out and your family is taken care of. That's why we're excited to tell you about a very special offer from Witch Wills. Witch Wills offers a straightforward, affordable and trusted service for writing your will. Whether you need a simple will or something more complex, our expert team is here to help you every step of the way. With Witch Wills you get access to legal professionals who can answer your questions on a one-to-one basis, 
customizable options to suit your specific needs and circumstances, and peace of mind knowing that your will is legally sound and your wishes will be respected. You can start the process from the comfort of your own home. Just visit whichwills.witch.co.uk forward slash premium dash 30 to get started. That's whichwills.witch.co.uk forward slash premium dash 30. And if you purchase before the 30th of September, you will get 30% off Witch's premium will service. Don't put it off any longer. Secure your family's future today.